Hey guys, it's Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. We're home in my home workshop here, which um, I'm still yet to get organised. I'm still trying to build shelves and things, and I just don't seem to have time to get it done. I keep taking on projects for you guys, but that's all right. We'll get there eventually. I've got to put some carpet down too. It'll hopefully stop all the echoness here. Uh, this is a large LG 50-inch smart TV. Uh, it was dropped off for e-waste recently. Now. TVs, as far as scrapping go, are worth very, very little. These things only really have a couple of little boards in them and a power board. Uh, mostly plastic um, and the glass screen, of course, and there's some LED backlights, but there's not much to them. And really, the power cord's probably more value scrap-wise than anything else. With the, um, the boards in there and the power cord, you'd still be lucky to make a dollar for scrap. So... They're not that cool to take apart as far as e-waste value goes. And I like to try and fix things, as many of you know. Now, this this model is a 50-inch. It's got a build code of 2014, so it's only six years old. In fact, in reality, it's probably only been out in the retail, from the retail shop for about for maybe five years max because they don't kind of make them in your lounge room they sit in the warehouse for a while and end up in retail shops for a while so basically it's a pretty new tv now i'll turn it on i'll show you what it's doing um, and the only reason i'm considering fixing it is it's nice and clean there's no physical damage the screen's not cracked i have the remote control with it it has the power cord so we'll turn it on and show you what it's doing the, um, there we go, we had a flash. So it boots up fine. But what happens, the LED backlights, you can see them flashing there, I think. Maybe not. No, they're not flashing yet. There we go. And now they'll just intermittently flash like that. And you can see that when they're on, the screen does have um, vision. And I haven't got anything to play through it here at the moment, but... If we go to the info thing on the remote, there we go. So you can see that it's doing what it's supposed to do, but you only see the screen vision when the backlights are flashing. Now, you can also tell, if I turn the main light off to my room here, and hopefully that flashing doesn't drive you crazy, and put a little torch on here, you can actually see that the screen's good. It's only the flashing, I'll stop that because it's driving us all crazy. It's only the flashing happening from the backlights intermittently going off and on. And they do that, I believe, because uh, a few of them or one of them or one in each row or something actually blows and it causes an imbalance in the power. And uh, then it kind of draws extra current and then the thing trips out and then trips back in and then out and in and you get the flashing from the ones that are actually still okay. So there's numerous YouTube videos on how to fix them. It's quite involved. We have to take things right apart. But given that it's a, a large size, fairly modern smart TV, I think it's worth mucking around with. So I'll get it up on a table in my workshop and we'll pull it apart. I don't have room in my little room for uh, this big TV, so I've put it on the table out in the main shed. Uh, it's not an ideal spot to do TV repairs, but it'll do uh, at least for the first stage where we'll have to pull it apart and uh, get right down to the LEDs and then we'll do some tests. First step is to take these uh, legs off, just two screws on each of those, and then we're going to have to run right around the side and undo all the Phillips head screws all the way around it and probably some in the middle will have to come out too. I'd suggest probably every screw and then we'll be able to take the back cover off. Okay I've got all the screws out. Um, something to be aware of, always check the screws because sometimes they put different length ones in different spots and if you go and put a longer screw back into where a shorter one came from when you're assembling it you can actually end up doing some damage. In this case all the ones around the outside were the same size and these two uh, coarser threaded ones just came from where the sockets were. So I've made note of that. 
I'll be able to put them back the same way. Now the cover should come straight off. No worries. Now you can see there's very little in these TVs. Uh, as I explained at the start, the scrap value on these TVs is next to nothing. You've got a, a small mid-grade board, which would be you know, probably worth about 20 cents for scrap. A little bit of wire around the place. Uh, the power board's really not worth much at all. So very little scrap, um, just a big sheet of tin. But if you're start, going to start pulling those apart, you've got to deal with the glass screen, which is a problem. So I don't take these really for, um, or I don't take them apart for e-waste. It's just not worth it. I end up taking them back out to the transfer station if I can't fix them. All right, so now we need to um, have a look at separating this from the main screen. And I think we'll need to take these speakers out. And then there's some pa panels underneath here that we have to disconnect the, um, the ribbon wires to the actual screen. So these speakers are marked right hand and left hand, so that's fine. We won't get them confused. All right, so these panels have to come out. There's two screws on each side and we need to carefully disconnect these ribbon cables. Okay, the screws are getting smaller so I'm going to use a screwdriver for these ones because um, the drill is a bit severe on smaller screws. So we'll take these ones out and we can re remove these steel panels. Okay, these panels should come off now. There were a couple of screws in the, the side which I have to take out anyway all the way around to get the, uh, the bezel off. There we go. Now these ones are also marked as an L layer for the left and the other one has an R for right. So they're fairly helpful. At least we should be able to work out where the parts go when it's time to put it back together. So it's been a few days since I've been back in the shed and it's a nice evening to come out here. Now, I unclipped these little cables and the black part of that clip, you can see, just pivots. So you need to get your fingernail under that and flick it up and then the ribbon can come out safely. I did actually undo the two screws and take that plate off the top of the T-Con board, which allowed me a little bit more room just to grab the ribbon and carefully pull it out square rather than trying to get my finger under the edge of the, the tin there. So that's worked well these are now loose now we have to be really careful with these because the connectors here go straight into the lcd screen and if they get broken well it's good night charlie you're not worth fixing the tv so now that they're both free i'm going to try and unclip the main frame from around the bezel around the side and I've got all the little screws out from around the side uh, some of the YouTube channels I saw the guys do it the other way and they actually used suction cups and lifted the, the glass screen off but the risk with that is they're very easy to crack so I'm going to try and do it this way hopefully the screen can stay on the towel and not be moved and I can lift the, the main assembly off the top of it and then I'll turn it over and put it on this other I've just made a temporary sort of table with that red piece of board there. Uh, and then we should be able to get to the LEDs. So that worked quite well. It's not, um, it's a little awkward, but it's certainly not heavy. Uh, it'd be easier with two people because you've got to make sure the clips don't reattach. Now the beauty of doing it this way is um, we don't disturb the LCD screen or these sheets of... Um, a diffuser sheets and there's quite a few sheets in there as well so we leave that all there with the bezel around there and as you can see the LED lenses were left behind quite a lot of them so they've obviously been loose um, I did hear a couple of guys talk on the YouTube 
videos about the fact that they used really cheap glue or at least the glue breaks down over time and look at that it's just sitting there so we're going to have to glue all those back on as well but that's not the initial problem uh, and we didn't know that they were all off because the screen was pretty much black except for some flashing so if this was the only problem we would see a whole heap of white dots all over the screen instead of them being diffused by these lenses so we need to identify now which of these LEDs are crook and uh, once we fix that then we'll glue all these lenses back on so the next thing to do is to get this white um, reflector screen off and there's plastic clips here and there's little button ones as well so we have to work our way around get all of those out and then we can lift the reflector screen and have a good look at the LEDs and maybe apply some voltage and see if we can work out which which ones are crook and which are causing the flashing so to get these little button ones off we need to attack them from the back and just squeeze those together and they'll, and they'll push through I can't do that one handed but that's all we need to do with those ones and the other ones if we look at the back how they come through you can see they need to slide to one side to come out okay that's got all these little plug ones out except one and guess where they hit it they put one underneath the T-Con board so I have to take this cover back off I had this off before when we removed those ribbon cables and we have to lift the board out of the road carefully and there's a the little guy just there so that's the last one of those I'll take that out in a tick now with these other ones if you look at how the clips are set up at the back and I'll come over to this one this one's probably better you can see that there's a little clip part at that end and we just need to push that in and whilst that one's pushed down I'll get my fingernail under this end and the whole lot will slide because there's a clip catching that end as well so they can seem fiddly but once you work out how they work they're really quickly quick to undo I'll see if I can position the camera and you can watch me do this one okay just push that one in there lift this end up with the fingernail and it slides across so that's all involved that's involved with those hopefully they haven't hidden any of those under these two boards in the middle because I'm hoping not to disturb those boards if I can help it well of course they did they put clips everywhere I've already got these four out um, that one's a bit tight but I, I've got a way of getting that out and this last one here so we can get them out from this side as well and I'll show you on this one because it's um, loose enough it should be fine uh, now I'm not sure if they're all the same across different brands but these ones the end that looks like an arrow they actually have to go the other way so I'm going to use a pair of tweezers here and just slide under the end and push that clip down inside lift this end with my fingernail and there we go easy as pie now this other one's a bit firmer and it was actually the tightest one of the lot and I haven't got him out yet but I reckon I might have to use some pliers on this end and I should be able to work it back and get it out then we can lift off this reflector and have a look at the LED assembly okay time to do some voltage tests I've got the LED screen in my little workshop now I've got a DC power supply and we're going to test some of the LEDs just to see what's blown and what hasn't uh, options for repairing this you can buy complete sets uh, but there's none in Australia at the moment and I don't like my chances of getting things out of China just at the moment uh, in any reasonable time so I'll um, see if I can find some either individual LEDs to resolder on their um, surface mount ones so I think you've got to take all the plastic off and you can resolder a new LED on or I may be able to buy some strips just to replace any sections that are no good. Uh, I was reading uh, one electronics technician was saying that LEDs 
don't really kind of wear out so it's not like if we replace all the blown ones with new ones and the other ones are kind of going to be half worn and they'll blow blow fairly soon if essentially they, they don't, they're good or they're not and um, so we should be able to replace the blown ones and the other ones should still perform quite well uh, and hopefully then they'll last now I believe you can turn down the LED backlighting through the menu on your TV and that's the reason why a lot of them blow because they're actually just turned up too high so, right, how are we going to test them? Well, each strip is, there's nine LEDs in each strip. They are in a section, there's a joiner in the middle, and they actually have five on one side and four on the other. And that alternates throughout the whole um, screen. Now, I believe there's six volt LEDs. I found that out doing some reading through Google. Uh, most LEDs are only three or 2.7 or something these ones I believe are 6 volt so what we're going to need to do is to apply um, the correct amount of voltage across one section so in this section of 5 we're going to need to apply 30 volts now LEDs will light up at a little bit lower voltage and if you go too much higher you're going to start blowing them and then the rest of the strip there's only 4 so we're going to need 24 volts on that. And as I said, it alternates down through the screen. So if I set my power supply here to, let's go up to 30, which is maximum voltage. And what we're going to need to do is take this end link out, which completes the circuit on this strip. And these come out by lifting up. So you see there's a little lug on each side. You just kind of squeeze them together with your fingernails and the actual thing lifts up. So if you're trying to pull it out, how you'd pull out a normal plug that way, it's not going to work. You need to lift it up. So we're going to use this little link and we're going to put it at the end of the first strip. And that will isolate the first strip and we can test it. So I need to now disconnect this loop by lifting up and putting this one in its place. And that's just a matter of pushing it down like so. So we've isolated that top strip. Now we've got our 30 volts. I'll put the camera down and we'll do some testing on the longer section, the, the section with five LEDs. So I've turned the under shelf lighting off. I think it'll be easier for you guys to see now. So we're going to test this first strip of five. Now if we put the posit red to the positive, these little test points are marked. And if we do the black to the bottom negative, it actually tries to light the whole row. Uh, and very very dimly of course because we've only got 30 volts and there's 9 LEDs so it needs about 56 volts to run it so if we do the negative on the middle terminal it'll just run this half and we can see that we've got a few LEDs out on this one uh, there's two that work we've got three that are out I'll mark them with a pencil so that one I marked before that one and the last one so if we can replace individual LEDs, we know which ones to replace. If I can replace the strip segments, even if I can get some secondhand ones, uh, this is the B1, which has five LEDs. I know that that strip segment needs replacing. So now we'll turn the voltage down to 24. Spin the camera around and we'll test this section of four. Now, we'll work from this end, and it's only got two options here, plus and a minus, which just does these four. So, we'll give that a run, and that's excellent. Those four work beautifully, nice and bright. So, these other ones that we saw before, the ones that were working were quite dull, probably because the ones that are blown were actually mucking up the circuit, perhaps they were introducing some extra resistance but when they're in good order, like you just saw, those four work beautifully. So that strip is good. 
Now we'll have to relocate our little jumpers to isolate the next strip and we'll test those the same way and we'll go right through the rest of them and we'll mark out which dodgy ones we've got. At this stage, the first strip was dodgy. So I'll just show you this one, second strip down. This is a lot of five, a B strip. And I've disconnected from the, the top, so it no longer loops from the top strip, as you can see. And down the other end there, I've put the plug back in to finalize the circuit there. So when we tested this one, we get four working, but one's not. And because that one has blown, it's mucking up the brightness of the other four. So I've marked this one here as a blown one. And again, if I get to replace individual ones, those other ones will be okay. Uh, I've done the other end here and these four light up brilliantly. So I'll keep going through the rest of the screen and I'll let you know at the end how many I need to replace. Okay, I've finished testing. The results are in. We have quite a number out actually. Um, but the ones mostly on this side, that one was good, that one was good, that one was good, and the bottom one was good. So this half are pretty good, except the very top one, which we had two, three bad LEDs. Uh, on the other side, the top one was good. The next one down, we had one bad one. The next one was good. Uh, this one here had one bad one again. And the bottom one had four bad ones. So that whole strip of four are all gone. So we definitely have to buy some new strips. Now I did a bit of checking online and I can buy some secondhand uh, tested, working, but secondhand um, strips to replace for this model uh, at $20 each. Now, they were advertising on eBay to buy a complete set for around about $50, but they were out of China. Uh, I want to try and find some in Australia um, purely because I'd like to get this done soon and get the TV all out of my shed. Uh, so, we certainly got to replace that one and the one up the top has most bad LEDs except for two so I might experiment seeing so we're going to throw them out anyway I might see if I can take those two working ones off and they will then be able to get this one going because that's only got one bad one and this other track here has only one bad one so we'd get away then with only buying two segments uh, that's an A one having only four and this one up the top here is a B strip having only uh, having five. So that means it would cost me $40 if I can salvage the working LEDs off that top one and try and put them on the other ones. So I'm going to have a play with that. If it doesn't work, I'm just going to have to buy more strips. So we'll um, try and get these off for a start. I'll start with this one, seeing so they're all gone. And see how easy they come off because they're, they're on with like a... A double sided tape or glue or something and they seem like they're very firm so i'll have a bit of a play if it tears and makes a mess of it doesn't matter that one's got to come off anyway and hopefully we can get this other one off and save a couple of good leds on it so i've got the strips off all right they um once i started them they actually did lever up all right um just with my fingers but they were fairly well stuck but uh, interestingly as i've peeled them over we can see at the back which LEDs had blown, quite obvious. And they're the ones that I've marked on the other side. So um, that's good. I mean, our diagnosis was going to be right anyway, because they obviously didn't light up with power, but they look fine from the front, but on the back, clearly they've um, overheated or blown. So I'm gonna see if I can unsolder one of the good ones uh, it doesn't show any burn marks on the back. And um, we'll see if we can replace the one dodgy one on two of the other strips, which again shows evidence of burning out. So I'll have a go at that. I don't know if it's going to work or not. If it doesn't work, I'll just have to buy more strips. Okay, I'm back to this TV after about three weeks or so, probably a little bit longer for me, but it's only been a few seconds for you guys. Um, now, 
we took the bad strips off. I did have a bit of a play with trying to replace, trying to take the um, the good LEDs off and replace the burnt ones, but it wasn't very successful. I haven't had any experience before at, at taking off surface mount devices. Uh, the only way I had to do it, I've got a, a nice little hot air gun with my soldering iron, and it certainly got hot enough to melt the solder, and they slid off okay. Then I had to work out which way was positive and negative, and I think I might have put one or two around the wrong way. Um, from what I can tell, there's just a small bevel on one corner on the negative side, I think it was. Uh, and then, of course, I dropped one or two on the floor and couldn't find them again. So, yeah, it was just really just experience, I suppose. You can see that's one spot where I actually took one off. And, look, with some practice, I'd probably be able to do it. But I thought... Well, what the hell, I thought, I might as well just buy the complete kit out of China and and pack this thing away until it turns up. And then I've got all new strips and I don't have to worry about fiddling around. And um, lo and behold, I placed the order on eBay and I messaged the seller and he replied promptly and, and professionally. And within 11 days, can you believe that? Within 11 days from China, in the current world's climate, I received a whole pack of new strips for just under fifty dollars, including postage, and uh, I was very happy with that service. In fact, Christine's been waiting on a parcel out of Melbourne, which is only an hour and a half down the road, for longer than what it took me to get this out of China. So um, amazing. Anyway, now that I've got all the new strips, and they also come with the reflect, uh, not the reflectors, the lenses. Uh, I'll probably replace the lot. I think I might as well do it while I'm going. And the strips that I have tested and marked good, I'll just put aside. Um, I'll probably put them back in this box, mark them what TV they were for, and uh, who knows, I'm getting a lot of these in the e-waste, and perhaps I might get another one, and I'll have already have the uh, strips for it. So that's what I'll do now, tonight. Um, I'll take the rest of these strips off. I have marked the good ones, and I'll um, stick the new ones down, and then we can start reassembling. Well, there we go. I have all the new strips down. Um, it was relatively straightforward. If you're doing this yourself, um, just be patient and take your time because if you stick one the wrong way around, it's, you know, that the sticky stuff on the back of them grabs fairly strongly. So make sure you get it right. I did notice that these wire loops with the plugs, um, they were much tighter, and I had to use the back of a flat blade screwdriver to push them down. They did clip in okay, and the pins seemed the right distance, but they were certainly tighter than the old ones were. And the other thing I'd suggest is just be careful when you're pulling the old strips off. Um, sometimes the sticky uh, went with the strip, and sometimes it stayed on the tally, and there was a film of, um, of like thin plastic that was a bit loose. So make sure you clean up any loose materials before you stick the new ones down because we want them to stay nice and firm. Uh, all these lenses seem to be quite firm and solid, so uh, that's all good. So I think it was worth replacing the whole lot um, because uh, I did try one of these new ones where they join in the middle. I tried to push one into the old one just to line them up and it was quite firm. Again, the, the plugs don't aren't quite exactly the same, whereas these new ones all clip together really nicely. And you've just got to be aware that you get the little locating dots in the right place. Uh, there's usually a single one on each row. And that's really important because then all the lenses, the LEDs and the lenses are in exactly the right position for when you put the white reflector screen over. And they'll all line up nicely with the holes. So now we can just reassemble the telly, which is basically the reverse procedure of dismantling. And uh, hopefully we have a good operational TV. The assembly is going very smoothly, no issues. All I've done with these um, little boards here is I've just put some test leads on them, purely to give them a bit of weight so they hang back out of the road. And uh, I've just been able to place the mainframe of the TV back on top of the screen. Uh, I made sure there was no dust or, or dirt or anything in there. Uh, I had it covered with black plastic while it was uh, waiting for parts. So now it's just a matter of going around the edges here 
and just just a little bit of tweaking with the screwdriver just to lever it in and out to get all the clips to line up but I think this is quite an easy way to do it and certainly the best thing is there's absolutely no risk of cracking the screen this way or mixing up all those diffuser sheets so uh, yeah I think it's worked well all right I'll get all the clips in now and then I can start reattaching these boards and some ribbon cables and we're not far off complete final check everything's plugged in everything's attached don't have any parts left over except for the screws that hold the back cover on and a couple of screws for the legs so successful reassembly let's hope it's a successful repair uh, it's getting late tonight I'm just going to put the cover on it and I'll check it probably tomorrow night okay I admit I couldn't leave it till tomorrow night once I got the cover on I thought geez I've got to test it to make sure all this work's been worthwhile so here we go first look ah beautiful now it's got to come up with some sort of menu screen, I guess. I don't have an antenna or anything on it, so I'm not going to get any TV stations. But um, that's great. Here we go. Backlights are working beautifully. And now all I'm going to have to do is uh, just go into the menu, and I believe you can turn down the backlight intensity, and then we shouldn't have any more problems in the future. So how's that? A 50-inch smart LG TV, only six years old, was thrown out in the e-waste um, for under 50 bucks in parts and that was all new backlights uh, the only thing is it took a lot of time it was very labor intensive although i haven't done one of these before and of course i had to double check everything and i had to research youtube channels to make sure i was on the right track and you know then film it all so it takes a while to do that i think if i did another one i'd certainly do it a lot quicker but that's fantastic very happy with that What's it worth? Well, I think they were a thousand or twelve hundred dollar TV, and it's only five or six years old, so I don't know, maybe three hundred, four hundred. But uh, I've I've got value out of it in that it's great satisfaction to save it from landfill, and I'm going to keep the thing. I think we've got a spot for this in our new studio room, and uh, probably mount up on the wall. We should get a long life out of it. Okay, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.